Welcome, this is a follow-up video to the first video that I posted uh, about getting into your Francis, Francis X5 espresso maker. Uh, two, a quest, two questions came in, both having to do with gaskets from Kate R. Gill or Cater Gill and Leem 1978. Cater Gill specifically had uh, questions regarding a, a loose steam pipe and if there were any uh, recommendations or if I could show uh, what my steam pipe looked like um, on mine and uh, how it worked. Uh, we're quickly going to go over just the major pieces uh, of this. We won't spend too much time on it. We'll just dive right into the gasket stuff. This back here uh, is the uh, power switch. This is the wiring for the power cable that will come in from your mains. This uh, green board down back here is the electrical thermostat controlling the temperature of the water. Obviously, hotter water for steam uh, water for steam purposes and lower for drinking purposes. This is a uh, is the uh, the uh, water pump. Uh, this brings the water in from the reservoir back here, uh, pump and pumps it through into the uh, the boiler in here. Um, and then from the boiler, it either goes down straight into the espresso, uh, the espresso pod down here, filtering through the coffee, or if you've got the, the steam wand turned opened up to make uh, your your latte or cappuccino, it will go through here and out the steam pipe. As you can imagine, any device, electrical uh, or otherwise, that in deals a lot with liquids or water and hot water, especially when there are electronics involved. Uh, has a uh, myriad of gaskets and various things inside to keep the liquid from leaking or getting into areas where it should not. That makes it a little bit difficult uh, as to where are the gaskets? How do I replace the gasket? Well, it depends on which one you're speaking about. Uh, in all my research on this, I did not find a very good uh, exploding diagram of the Francis Francis X5, but I was able to find a pretty decent one of the Francis Francis X1. Let's get that ring light out of the way here. Uh, and apparently the X1 and the X5 were not that dissimilar in that you could probably uh, apply most of the diagram information from the X1 and uh, assume it carries over to the X5. And that's pretty much where I get most of my information for, uh, for this video. So uh, we're going to quickly um, move from here. I will provide a link to that uh, diagram and along with many other things that I'll be talking about in this video uh, in the video description below. Um, so replacing gaskets is not uh, 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 a difficult task. Um, dip, you know, it's not like you're, you're dealing with soldering irons or, or electrical components or things like that. However, I will say that the market for replacement parts is not the easiest to navigate, mostly because this, the X5, is out of manu it's not being manufactured anymore, and a lot of it comes from shops in Europe uh, or uh, uh, the United Kingdom, and you can get those devices. It's cumbersome. Uh, you can get replacement parts, and you'll be paying in euros or pounds, and then you'll have to be uh, sitting back waiting for your delivery. Um, so with that, we will move on over to uh, an examination of this portion of my Francis Francis X5, which is the steam wand and the pieces inside of it. So here's a different angle on the insides of the machine. Inside the boiler, the water comes through uh, when the, the uh, steam wand knob or button are switched on. Then it will come through here at some point. In here is the... Um, the, the valve or plug or whatever you want to call it, that turning this on, this is the steam wand on, removes the block from here and allows the steam or the hot water to go through here and shoot out the steam wand here through the bottom. So from here, I, I would expect there to be gaskets. Now, the X1 did show there were a couple of gaskets in the X1's diagram. On the X5, just looking at it and without having opened it up yet, I did not do this in advance. I expect there to be a gasket inside here. I expect there to be a gasket inside here. And I expect there to be a gasket inside here as well, inside this spot right here, where the wand can, is physically connected to the rest of the machine. I do not believe they have anything to do with the steam wand being loose. Their existence is likely solely only to prevent leaks and prevent uh, water from escaping or moisture of any sort. 
Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wiggle this a little bit. And you can see up and down, it's pretty secure. Nothing moves side to side. It definitely moves, and I didn't do anything with this. This is, I mean, granted, it's many, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old that I've had this, and I've not messed with this before. I've never really, I would not describe this as wrong, not being an espresso machine expert. Um, I, I think this is fine. It's, you know, you, I would expect it to move, and if there's any sort of move, then I guess there's going to be some angle move in here as well. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I will, once I open it up, um, I'll probably have a better view, but I don't think this is necessarily wrong. So I'm not sure uh, what yours looks like, but I think that's okay. The only other major gasket with the, uh, the, the broad reference to gaskets is going to be underneath the boiler uh, inside the, where the pod goes. So I believe there's a gasket, there's a larger one inside, or not, not inside the boiler, but underneath here where uh, the, uh, the handle goes, where you put the espresso uh, maker. I can kind of, reaching underneath here, I feel it. Um, well, no, I don't, that's press. Well, anyway, with the X-Run diagram, there was a gasket under here as well. It's a, probably the largest one in the entire body. So in a minute, I'm going to uh, show you, I'm going to cut to an already open and disassembled uh, portion here. I have already tried it before, not successful yet. I decided to stop because I was actually damaging uh, this nut here when I did it. So uh, the problem is, is I don't think I have an accurate... Um, wrench here because these are in uh, millimeters and I think I need uh, not millimeters. Um, so this is the 10. Uh, it fit relatively okay here on this one, but this was very tight. You can see there's some give here. So I think it needs to be something a little bit tighter. I'm going to go get a different tool to do this and open it up. But I tried it a couple of times and I had damaged the brass here on the side. So I eventually I just kind of stopped. So I'm going to open, see if I can open these up off camera next. This one, this one, and then maybe this one here on the bottom and see if I can get at the gaskets. If there is leaking coming from here, then it's definitely a sign of the gaskets or maybe uh, maybe these joints need to be tightened up or something. But I don't think it has anything to do with uh, this being uh, loose or not. I think that might be intentional. And I don't know how loose, uh, how loose yours is. So it was a 10. I measured it uh, with my digital calipers over here and it, uh, and it was, you know, a 10. So 10 was fine. I just needed a different angle on it and I was able to get them off pre relative, relatively easy with a little bit of muscle in there. Um, so what we wound up with here was a couple of nuts that just kind of popped off. They're not, uh, I mean, they're there as kind of like backup as opposed to, or reinforcement as opposed to the primary thing that's connecting these cables to uh, the, the boiler valve here and then the steam wand valve here. So they both do the same thing. Um, I don't see any gasket in there and I don't think it has or needs one and I don't intend on going any further than this because I don't want to be responsible for me uh, having to make sure that those are both securely back in place so I'm going to replace them uh, replace the nuts put them back on tighten them up uh, nice and good uh, if you do this on your own I don't think you need to for the purposes that I read earlier but in the event that somebody sees this and decides to do this on their own, maybe they want to take it a little, a little deeper than I did, be careful of this right here. This is kind of in the way when you're uh, t taking this off and eventually putting it back on. I believe that is the connection that uh, feeds data to the, I think, back here to this uh, temperature control board. At least that makes sense to me. Uh, I didn't trace the wire, but that's where, uh, that's where you would control the temperature of the water and how hot it boils. Is it hot? You know, is it uh, hot enough to use the steam wand or is it uh, hot enough for just uh, espresso? So just be careful of that when you're messing around with it. So here is the wand, steam wand assembly uh, taken apart. First thing that we had to do was remove the uh, nickel plated uh, uh, screw here from the top of the brass, um, the brass, this brass piece. And then once that was off, it permitted the uh, the dial, the steam wand dial that you unscrew and unscrew to have steam come out. Had to take that that nut and washer off. That required a 17 millimeter wrench here. Worked just fine, not too difficult. And then once we had that apart, then we had the actual steam wand itself. That uh, came off with a number 14 wrench. That was also not too difficult at all. 
uh, in this entire contraption, I see one, two, three O-rings or gaskets, whatever you might want to call them. Those are the um, items that keep the connection watertight or water uh, resistant or secure somehow. They have less, to, like I said before, they have less to do with the device, you know, staying in place and more to do with uh, keeping water from escaping. Um, if you look inside the brass piece here, you'll see nothing. Let me zoom in a little bit. So there's nothing inside but brass. So no hidden, no hidden uh, gaskets or rings in there. No hidden gaskets or rings in there. So those are the pieces. Uh, those are the only problem. Since brass is going to last a lot longer than silicon or rubber, uh, these are. If you have any leaking or any of that sort of nature, these are the ones that are probably going to need replacing because they will fail before brass does. This um, feels like pretty secure plastic. Obviously, plastic will go before brass, um, probably not before rubber or silicone. So there you have it. So like I said before, depends on what gasket you're talking about. And um, I don't, like I said, I don't think it has much to do with whether or not it was um, keeping your wand held securely in place.